Hello and welcome to another week of reading scripture together. Um, I hope this rainy, uh, gray Tuesday uh, is a day uh, of goodness for you, uh, that even as we begin the fall season, you might be filled with hope uh, and uh, that there uh, is a sense of anticipation uh, for you uh, as you open the scripture and we try to read it together. Um, as you know, we have been reading through the Gospel of Matthew, and we are coming towards the end. Jesus is getting closer and closer to his end. And, and remember, Jesus knows all that is going on. As they were approaching Jerusalem, Jesus pulls the twelve aside and lets them know that he knows that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed uh, to the chief priests and teachers of the law, that they will condemn him uh, those in authority, those in power, those put uh, in place by God over God's people are going to condemn Jesus and then hand him over to the Gentiles uh, who will ruthlessly mock him, flog him, and kill him. Jesus knows that the end is coming uh, and the hope is that he will then be raised from the dead. So, so as we get to the end of Matthew, remember there's all this tension uh, Jesus knows it's there. The disciples are becoming aware of it. And Jesus is going deeper and deeper into it, uh, into this deep uh, existential cosmic tension between the sin of our hearts, the sin within our relationships, the sin within our cultures, the sin within all the systems, including the religious ones uh, that uh, are in rebellion against God. Jesus is entering into all of that, and it becomes more and more clear uh, that Jesus is going to enter into it, uh, and, he, and he's not going to just make it go away. Somehow victory is going to come through the tension, and uh, we saw that uh, amp up when Jesus cleans the temple, uh, claiming that it is his house, uh, and directly after that, Jesus is questioned uh, about his authority. By what authority are you doing these things, and how did you get that authority? Um, the authorities ask, Read that section uh, of chapter 21, uh, beginning at verse 18, continuing through the chapter. And as you do, uh, notice this. The opponents are seeking for a way of controlling and confining Jesus. Uh, and Jesus, even in uh, relationship to them, in tension with them, uh, is doing something very different. He is seeking to uh, free them. Remember, Jesus is coming to reconcile all things to the Father. He is coming uh, to make peace. Um, but that doesn't mean that Jesus is nice. It doesn't mean that Jesus is sweet. In fact, Jesus is um, both gracious and promising judgment and somehow bringing that judgment in the midst of this conflict. So Jesus isn't just nice or sweet, but he is gracious. He is extending grace to those uh, even who are trying to confine and control uh, and condemn him. Uh, but at the same time, Jesus is promising judgment and, and the authorities get it. Uh, he believes, um, Jesus believes that they will be judged and they understand that. Um, and that conflict continues. It continues throughout chapter 22 and 23 of Matthew. We're going to read one parable to try to enter into that conflict. Uh, be interesting. It'd be helpful possibly for you uh, to listen to the, all, the whole of chapters 22 and 23, where Jesus enters into this conflict and turns up the volume on the conflict, um, even as we study Matthew 22, 1 to 14, this parable um, about what God is doing uh, and the way people are responding and rebelling. Uh, the parable begins um, uh, when Jesus answers his opponent. The NIV says Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying, uh, the Greek is very clear, Jesus is answering. Uh, there's some conversation going on, there are questions, and Jesus is answering. Lots of translations, including the King James, uh, have this Jesus answered and spoke in parables. Uh, so he's still answering, and he's still using parables uh, that invite people in 
uh, to the kingdom so that they can see things uh, with a kingdom vision. Uh, and the image that Jesus uses in this parable is the image of the royal wedding. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who is preparing a wedding banquet for his son. Think about Kate and William. Uh, all that went on, the pageantry, the preparation, uh, the expense of uh, the king putting on a wedding for the future king. Think about the royal wedding and then think more generally about weddings. What do weddings include? Uh, what makes them special? What's at the heart of a wedding that, some, that is so deeply compelling? And, and what is it then that comes out of that center uh, that gives us hope? Think about what Jesus is saying, that he wants to compare uh, who God is and what God is doing through him, uh, the kingdom that uh, God is bringing, the kingdom of which he is the king, is like a wedding. Uh, dwell with that. Use your imagination to enter into that. Think about your wedding, if you've been married. Think about the best wedding you've ever been to. Uh, and Jesus is saying uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to be like that and then so much bigger and better than that. Uh, it's a royal wedding. Uh, and the A-list inv invita invitees, the A-list invitees, have already received to save the date. They know the wedding is coming, and now it's time for the wedding to begin. And so the king sends out servants, but they refuse. So do you see there's an invitation and there's tension, kind of like the whole of the gospel story, kind of like the whole of the Bible? Uh, God has been seeking uh, for a faithful covenant partner from Adam on through Abraham, through the ages. God is seeking uh, to invite people into what he is doing and into his joy and into his love, but people are refusing. And then we hit verse 4. If that's the opening, uh, the action continues when Jesus tells us about a king who sends the servants out again to invite the A-list invitees again. Uh, and what does it tell us that he would do that? And then what do we learn about the king in his words that, that extend, that compel, that invite? They don't force, but they are compelling. Um, what does it tell us about the king? And then what do we learn in verse 5 about those invited? What are they concerned about? What, what are they giving themselves to? What are they committed to? And, and what does it look like uh, to be uh, so concerned with your business that you ignore the business of the king and the kingdom? And then verse 6, read that verse and ask yourself, what possibly could make these guests living in the kingdom of a king like God, what could make them want to kill the servants who, who, have, who have been sent and who have come again? Well, if, well, I mean, can you imagine if someone came and invited you to a wedding, what would you have to feel about them to kill the, the messenger? Um, and then, in light of that, um, what is Jesus in verse tell, 7 uh, telling us about God? and God's kingdom, uh, and uh, in judgment. Um, what, what is the king saying about those um, who he brings judgment on? Um, and why do they deserve uh, that judgment? Um, so what kind of warning is this? What kind of king is like this? And how is God both like this and unlike this? In verses 8 to 10, uh, the action keeps going. And um, many people have suggested that this is the movement uh, from those who were with Jesus to those who claim to be with Jesus now. Um, the invitation goes out. Right? This Paul is dealing with this in Romans chapter 9 because the Jewish people have rejected their Messiah uh, because of their rebellion uh, there is now the invitation of grace that goes out to the Gentiles. Um, so what happens uh, as uh, the scope is widened? And what is it that the king is seeking to do? Uh, and then in verse 11, what is it that the king is looking for? What is it that when the kingdom comes, 
God the Father will be coming to look for in the people of his Son. Uh, and then uh, we come to this one person who is in the banquet but is not dressed for a wedding. How do you understand what Jesus is talking about? Uh, who is he talking to? Uh, and what, what does, difference does it make that the king calls this guest, who is in the banquet but not prepared for the banquet, friend? Um, think about those details and think about all of them as they lead up to what uh, Jesus says at the end. So read through it, look at the details, and then read it again and, and try to remember as we seek to understand this that, that, that all of this, Jesus' joy uh, that um, fits the wedding feast motif uh, is all being expressed um, in the midst of conflict as an invitation uh, to his enemies and as a warning to those who um, are condemning him.